Look at me. Okay, good morning everybody. I'm very pleased to be joined by Matt Fitzpatrick from Team Europe. Matt, you're playing in your third Ryder Cup, but you're first on European soil. How much are you looking forward to playing in front of the home fans this week? Yeah, really, really excited. Um, like you say, first in Europe, so um, definitely has a different atmosphere. Um, and uh, yeah, just really looking forward to, to being part of it, and I'm sure it's going to be an amazing week. Thank you. We'll open up some questions. If you'd like to raise your hands. Start on the far right, please. On mic two. Morning, Matt. I was um, hoping to leave this one a bit later and let you warm up first, so we'll have to get it out of the way. But I gather you're a big Sheffield United. Uh, okay. Um, no, no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder how your mood is coming over. You know, given the drubbing they got. Scott, I'm done. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> how are you coping? <laughs> um, no, yeah, I had the pleasure of being there on Sunday. Um, uh, yeah, just, yeah, it wasn't good. Um, but no, I, I'm, I was just really excited to be here this week, really. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, just looking forward to getting to Rome, getting this week underway. And, um, you know, from, from getting here late Sunday night, it's uh, it's been great so far. Has it helped with the mood? Because I guess, you know, if you're... A in all seriousness, if you're a big football fan and see your team get thumped like that, and we've, most of us have been there. Well, yeah, it can't get any worse, can it? <laughs> um, no, it, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I am. I am a massive football fan, so yeah, it was a, a pretty uh, sore one to take. That's for sure. Go to Phil at the back. Hi, Matt. Um, obviously, it's been a, a while since your debut in 2016, and then obviously you played again in 2021. Just, can you just talk about how much more of a, a better, better player do you think you are um, since those two experiences? Yeah, I think looking back, um, you know, you could argue that uh, I probably wasn't necessarily ready for 2016. Um, probably would have been ready for 2018. Um, 2021, obviously very different from 16 as well. Better player, um, quite a bit older. And then uh, obviously now, also a different player uh, to, to then as well. So um, obviously a lot's changed in, in those two years for me. Um, definitely feel just much more experienced, particularly sort of looking around the team room this time. Uh, one of the, um, you know, more experienced players just in general rather than, you know, it's only my third Ryder Cup, but um, just having more experience in general, I think is holds you in good stead for, for this, this kind of event, so... And what does it do for your confidence to come in here as a major champion? Yeah, it it, it does it a world of good. Um, you just you definitely feel much more like you belong. Um, you know, you feel like you've had that success at the highest level before, and, and you feel you know you always have that feeling that you can repeat that. Um, so I think just having that confidence is uh, is a, is a big help. And so finally, for me, will you finally get to play a four ball match this week? I don't know, you'll have to ask Luke. <laughs> we'll just go behind to Nick, please. Good morning, Matt. I, I just, you mentioned 2016. What, what do you think was so hard about that, that match? I mean, you, uh, you talk about the experience, maybe you were too young for it. What did you find particularly challenging? Obviously, you know, you, the, the result didn't go the way you wanted, but can you talk a bit more about that one? Yeah, I think 2016, um, I was still 19 or 20, or maybe 21 or whatever. So I was still, I was still really young. Um, I um, wasn't obviously the, the longest back then. I was, you know, I was pretty, pretty short. Um, There's quite a lot of technical change, technical difference in my swing between now and then as well. Um, I think as an experience... I only, you know, I only played one foursomes and and the, and the obviously the singles, uh, so that that was kind of disappointing. You know, you, you build it up to be this um, 
amazing thing that you wanted to be part of thinking that you know you'll get a real good good go at it and and obviously I, I never did really um so that was obviously that's always something that's sort of disappointing um but at the same time you know like I say I look back at at that experience and that I, I was very young and um my game wasn't necessarily ready for for that almost I think I think the golf course set up that week was just you know not not in my favor at all as well um so yeah that that was obviously a, a, a an experience that wasn't necessarily um as good as you would have dreamt it to be um but you know that it's what you learn from and, and uh, you know I feel like I know much more how to get ready for for an event like this now than um than I did you know, learning from that. Okay, we'll cross over this side on Doug. Now searching for any happy memories you might have from the Ryder Cup. Um, from 16 and, and 21, could you, could you speak to what you've learned from the value of the Monday through Thursday part of the week? Um, what similarities, what, what maybe different touches have you seen depending on the captain? Yeah, I think for me, um, the big things that stand out for me is, you know, I think communication uh, is really, really important. Um, I think the captain has to be really clear with, or you, you know, or through the vice captains. I think you've you've got to be, you've got to have really good communication, knowing when you might play or or who you're thinking of being paired with. Um, I think communication is is a really big thing. Um, I think sleep is a real big thing. Um, you know, the days are really long. Your early starts, um, long days. And I remember looking back at 2021 and it's like, you know, you're going to bed at 10.30, which doesn't seem too bad, but then you're up at 5, 5.30 to, to get ready for you, for the match. I think that's, that's a big thing. So that's something I'm wary of this week. Um, and then I think... The other thing, you know, I've not done it yet, but I'm convinced you need to play a four-ball match, you know, to, to be able to play your own ball, to experience the pressure of playing the full round and not just hitting half the shots. I, I think that's really important. What was, I'm just curious what it was like when you have a, a one-sided match last time around to be in the, in the last single scoring off and, and, and long decided by the time you finish. What's it like playing that way? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, obviously it was bizarre. Like you say, it was, it was one-sided. Um, it, it was great though because Billy and uh, Daniel Berger's caddy at the time, we just took every flag. So I'm sure they've got them as mementos because um, no one really cared. But um, yeah, it, it was. You know, I ended up. We were. I was talking to Dan Daniel Berger as we were going round, and we we're kind of saying, you know, it's pretty dead. You know, the, these this match didn't really have any significance really and um by the time we got to about you know maybe the 10th or 12th hole really so um yeah it was uh, it, it was a little bit odd okay cross over to john on the left and matt there have been statisticians um <clears throat> many times in the past preparing his blushes would you tell us what the significance and what it is that eduardo brings to the team this year and to you, for that matter. Yeah, I think um, obviously we've had stats in the, the past two that I've played. Um, I just don't think they've been as in depth or as specific or had the knowledge um, like Eduardo has. Um, you know, Ed's played one of these. He's now vice captain in one of these. He's played on tour for so many years and he's just had that success and experience as a player. So, um, I think what he brings to the team as a vice captain is is absolutely fantastic, and um, I think through um, you know touched on communication being a big thing, and I think through his work with the other players already that he works with on tour, I think you know his communication has been very very good. So um, yeah, I definitely think he he brings a, a different dynamic than previous um, stats experience, and and I think it's you know better personally you a lot we know you've talked about that would you be here now were it not for him would I be what sorry would you be here if it were not for him uh I'd like to think I would be here yeah <laughs> um yeah <laughs> I would like to think so but uh yeah he's definitely helped me a lot yeah 
Okay, we'll go to Carl and Mike too. Hi, Matt. Um, in terms of Billy, I mean, he, he outstripped you all in the Ryder Cup experience. What does he offer this week? You know, the, the word is, is used all the time and probably overused, but the experience, you know, it's um, there's probably not a scenario that he hasn't seen in these. Um, I think he probably knows how most players tick, over, uh, having seen what's happened uh, in previous. Um, and I think, you know, having him on the bag for myself is, is invaluable just because of that. Um, you know, I remember... I remember a couple of years ago, um, it was the same thing. He was just, you know, super positive and um, just really helpful and, um, you know, guiding me through the week on that one. And, and I feel like, you know, I've learned through for myself that what I need to do this week to, to hopefully play my best um, and having him as well, he, he knows the same thing. So, Has it been regaling you all in the team room with stories of, years gone by uh yeah and i think in the caddies he, he has been yeah yeah uh, he's not told any in the players team room yet but uh, yeah he's got plenty to share we'll go to john on mic four on the far side hi matt <clears throat> just wondering if you can give us a bit of detail on, on what it is specifically that you get out of those stats um i think you know the biggest thing this week for me is is how you play the course you know where you're hitting it um where you're missing it to certain certain pins, where, where the, the best areas are, um, and just knowing your own game better, you know, knowing um, the percentages on what clubs to hit, how to hit them. It just, it, I mean, the depth that we go in, me, you know, me and my team go into personally is 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 pretty deep. So I feel like you know we we know my game very well and um, how we can use that to, to our strength around here. Go to Phil at the back. Uh, Matt, players usually say something along the lines of, I don't care if I win a single point as long as the team wins. If you said that, would that be actually true? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, I want to win a point, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, I really would rather be on a winning team. Um, there's no doubt about that. I think that is what, what's been so great about the last couple of years got a couple last couple of experiences anyway is obviously we've not been on the right end of the result but um just being part of the european team and and being amongst the guys that you play with week in week out um that, that's what makes the Ryder cup so special for me and just a word on the course obviously you've played here before at an italian open and a good good performance how has it differed if it has since the in the setup yeah, it's a little bit different. Uh, rough's a little bit higher, um, but uh, you know, green speeds are the same, and um, it's pr pretty similar overall. Uh, so uh, I think it's it's in fantastic condition. It really is, and um, I'd argue better than, than the Italian Open. So I think that's that's exciting. Um, but yeah, I think it's a, it's a good golf course. As you know, people say, oh, it's a good match play course. Normally, when people say that, it doesn't do it doesn't do it justice, but. Um, I actually think it's a good golf course too. Okay, we'll take the final question at the front. Thank you. Hello, Matt. I'm Isabella Calogero from Eurosport Italy. I have two questions for you. The first, uh, you told us before that in 2016 you were 21 years old. I think this is the same age Hoygaard has right now. So, which kind of ad advices are you going to give him for playing his best golf? Because you have this experience, so you can give some help. Which kind of advices? Yeah, I think the big thing is not to try too hard. I think you can be on the range trying to perfect your swing and um, trying to make sure you're hitting all the shots that you you, you know you want to hit. Um, I think you know sometimes it's hard to it's easy to say don't try too hard, but doing it is another thing. I think the important thing is if you can just you know play his own game and and try and um, you know, as easy as it says, just one shot at a time. I think that's what's important. I think just not to try too hard and try and find the perfect swing. Okay. The other question is, uh, in the past, we have Molinari brothers on the team, Eduardo and Francesco. So I'm wondering if you and your brother, Alex, have the targets of the Ryder Cup play, uh, played together in the future. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Um, if you know we we both keep playing well and Alex can sort of 
keep going, then uh, you never know what, what can happen. But I mean, that would be an, an amazing experience, and um, there's nothing I'd love more than um, to, to to play with my brother in a Ryder Cup. Okay, Matt. Thanks for joining us. We wish you all this week. Thank you. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, joined by Tyrrell Hatton from Team Europe. Tyrrell, we saw a nice video of Luke last night showing around the team room. Just for you personally, what's it been like being back in that team environment this week? Yeah, it's been great so far. Um, it's no secret that we, we love these weeks and they're very special for us as players. Um, so yeah, the, the setup's brilliant and um, yeah, enjoying it so far. Great, right, thanks. We'll go into some questions if you'd like to raise your hands. Perfect, done. We'll st <laughs> start with John down the front, please. Thanks, John. Uh, I wish. You're, you're all tied. What do you feel about a tie or a draw? Or at the end of the day, is it a feeling that you, is it like kissing your sister? Or um, <laughs> would, would you like to have a, would you like to have a playoff of some sort? What do you feel about it? Has some question for it was eight twenty-five in the morning. Um, yeah, but you're the man for the job. Come on. Well, I, I don't want to know what that. Uh, I don't want to know what that's like. How what you've referred to in the question, but um, <laughs> I, I would say tying is probably not ideal. Um, I think it'd be quite interesting if there was a way of putting in like a playoff in the, if that was to happen. I think it would be pretty exciting for, for fans um, and it would certainly create a pretty epic atmosphere. I mean, it's all right that playing in front of home fans is always special anyway, but um, yeah, I think that would add a something to it um i think you probably have the time to do it because singles you start generally fairly late in the later in the day compared to four balls and foursomes but um yeah maybe just having the tea time starting a bit earlier on sunday would allow for i don't know a, a nine hole better ball two two players uh best ball um sort of playoff format i don't know i'm just like sort of thinking as a speak kind of thing. So um, I think that that would be m a lot more exciting than just oh, it's a tie, like oh, such and such retain the retain the cup. I don't think that's the, the best thing. How would you feel about being the, the one, Europe, in this case, European representative against the one American if, if that's how it was decided? That would be enormous pressure, wouldn't it? Yeah. It, it would be a lot of pressure, but ultimately it's still the same. You've still got the same job. Like you're going out there trying your best, and you know that's that's all you can ever do. Um, but yeah, there would be a lot on the line. Thanks. Okay, we'll cross over to Doug. Clarify, Terrell. Do you have a sister? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. We'll get back to it. <laughs> a couple of questions for you. Um, first of all, what are your favorite, I guess, memories of, of playing with John uh, last time? What stands out to you? Um, well, we, I think we're, we're both fairly similar, um, pretty fiery people. Um, but John, John's obviously a fantastic player and, and naturally brings a, a great energy. Um, so, yeah, I just... I generally enjoy see um being in John's company so um yeah it's uh it's always nice as well when you're you're playing with a with a great player. Has he ever like said anything to fire you up or motivate you or does he need to? Um 
I mean, nothing sort of springs to mind. He does like to call me Tyrell, um, <laughs> which, that. yeah, that's, um, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting move. So. Did, it, did it have the right effect? Hey? Did it have the right effect? Uh, well, J John's obviously got a lot better memory than me. I think he started calling, saying that to me and whistling straights, and I might actually have hit a decent golf shot after that. So they were few and far between uh, for that week. So hopefully you fare better this week. And secondly, there's been a number of, of matches over the years. GMAC comes to mind. Um, you know, the long Irwin one was so famous where, where ultimately it comes down to one final match on the course. Um, would you be comfortable if it fell to you? And what do you think the, the answer would be for most players, both sides? It's a, it's a big ask. Well, I, thi I think if, if that's what it boils down to, then, um, yeah, d it goes back to what I just said. Like, you just you go out there and you continue to, to try your best over for every shot. Like, I don't think you can all of a sudden start, like, trying. You don't want to be, like, trying too hard to to be perfect because it's that's not achievable um it's a case of just you know I, when you're under pressure you just have to trust yourself and ultimately we've we've all been doing this for for many years and we've the amount of hours that we've all practiced um ultimately leads to certain moments that you get like that um and yeah, you just uh, try and try and deal with it as best as you possibly can. Okay, we're going far left. Microphone one. Carol, with the heightened emotions of the Ryder Cup and some of the chippiness that that can ensue, how do you avoid the natural temptation, I guess, to to take things personally or <coughs> to let what happens here linger into your relationships with with your opponents? Um. So you just get on with it, don't you? Um, I, I guess it's just part and parcel of what goes on this week and you, um, you're just trying, I guess, go about your business as best as you can for the team and, and trying your best to, to win a point. Um, and, yeah, that's all you want to do. Okay, just go forward to Rex. You just mentioned that you and John are similar players, fiery type players. Given the emotions of, of this event, is that exaggerated? Or are there more emotions? Are you more fiery? And if so, is that difficult to sort of handle when you're out on the golf course, or do you see it off as that? Um, no, I don't, I don't think it's difficult. I mean, playing well, for a home rider cup and you've got everyone on your side, um, naturally that I think that gives you a, a lift. Um, and when when you do something great and the the, the way the the crowd crowd react to that is um, is a cool feeling and yeah you, it makes you want to basically do it every hole um, and have the crowd on your side being loud and having that momentum um, but I don't think being being emotional is sort of I don't think that's a negative. Any more questions? We've got Phil at the back on mic four. Hi, Cyril. Um, just one quick one on the John Rahm thing. Is the Tyrell, is that a Game of Thrones reference or is that just how he pronounces it? No, he, he'll he generally say Tyrell. I guess if uh, if I've upset him, he'll hit me with a Tyrell. Um, the other thing was, obviously, um, individual records in the grand scheme of things don't matter in a team event, but do you feel like you have anything to prove at all this week or are, or are you just keen just to improve your personal record um no i mean i don't think i have anything to to prove um yeah i mean what what is my record is it two two and two and a half points out of seven um yeah it's i mean ultimately you're playing against the best players in the world like it's not easy um over 18 holes anything can happen Ideally, not 18 holes. Hopefully, it goes shorter in your favour. But um, yeah, it, it's hard. It's hard to win a point. Um, it's just is what it is. Like 
I, I don't sound boring repeating it, but like you are just going out there, try, giving your best every single time, and it's not it's not going to work out perfectly. Um, I think was it for the from a European side like the highest percentage of wins is I think it's around 70 percent yeah I mean so ultimately if you win half your matches like that's still like a a, a great effort do you know what I mean so um, ultimately if I can help the team with winning points that that's amazing and that's what I want to want to do this week um, and I, I'll, I'll try and do that as best as I can Maybe a final question on Carl. Yeah, excuse the flippancy, but who would win in a swear off between you and John? Who's got the best expletives? God, I don't understand why John doesn't swear in Spanish. Like, <laughs> why does he swear in English? I don't, I, I, I don't get it. He'd probably get away with it if he just swore in Spanish. But, um, but yeah, maybe the English language is, um, has a bit more punch to it with certain words. Do you know any Spanish swear words? Um... I, th I think I'd do it a, a pretty poor, I'd give it a pretty poor attempt. I wouldn't want to, one, embarrass myself or two, yeah, just uh, upset John, I guess, in front of him. But um, I, I think I'd probably win in a swear off. Yeah, I think I've got, I've got everyone covered when it comes to that. <laughs> got an extensive repertoire. Yeah, N just any time of day, anywhere. <laughs> Back on no holding back. Any circumstance, no holding back. Doesn't matter what we're doing. I'm swearing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> on, on that note, thanks for joining us, Cheryl. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Have a wonderful day.
Okay, welcome back everyone. I'm very pleased to be joined by Nikolai Hoygaard from Team Europe. Nikolai, your first Ryder Cup, just talk a little bit about the experience so far of being in the team room and uh, being out on the golf course for 18 holes yesterday. Yeah, it's a special week. Um, you're sitting next to your idols and your heroes and then and you're going out preparing for a big week and um, it's, it's pretty cool to be here and, and, um, and preparing and, and being in that team room, seeing the stuff that goes behind it and uh, that surprise Luke made yesterday with um, our shirts next to each other and, and then Seve's uh, in the middle. Um, it's, it was special, it was emotional and um, that's what this week is about. Okay, we'll go into some questions if you'd like to raise your hands. We'll start down the middle here on mic one, please. Hi, Nicola. Talk about how some of your heroes and idols on this team have said to you, if there's anything they can do to help you, don't hesitate, you can ask them anything. Uh, have you been asking them things and what sort of things have they been helping you with? Yeah, um, I think the, 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 the good part of all this is they've been in the same position that I've, I'm, I'm in now. Um, they got in the rookies, uh, obviously, Rory and Ram and, and those guys, Rose, have been here a lot, and um, they were rookies at once as, at one point as well, and and they had uh, guys, they, they asked questions, so being in the same position as them, um, trying to learn from the best is, is, is pretty cool. It's about how, how do you prepare for this week, going in as a rookie, compared to when you're an experienced guy, and um, and yeah, they all very good good to me and the other rookies and, and how to learn to approach this week and, and, and prepare and um, uh, yeah, I mean, just a, like basic stuff really. I mean, it's quite simple stuff you, you're worrying about and, and they're, they're pretty good at, at, at putting it down to simple uh, things you could, you could, you could do to, to prepare the best way. Okay, we'll go to the right hand side, John. What's the best? Um, that we've all been in the same place. I mean, everyone has, everyone has been in this position where they've uh, come in and being a team room with the guys you looked up to the whole, your whole life, and then suddenly you, you're playing with them and you're asking silly questions you, you don't normally probably would ask. And I think that's the cool part of all this, that we all got the same feelings, the same emotions. Uh, when we're playing and being in that team room, and, and that's the cool part of all this. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it, it comes down to simple things, and I mean, what do you do when you go on the golf course? What do you do? Like, all those stuff you don't, you don't normally ask about, but it's just because this week is so special, and you want to, you want to, ask a lot of questions, you want to interact with everyone all the time and you want to be prepared when you get to the golf course and what do we do and how do we do it because normally you, you, you know what you're going to do when you get to the golf course but you, this is just an experience you'll never like I mean, you never it would imagine I'd say and when you get here it's just so big and everything is, is different compared to a normal week so uh, just trying to learn as much as possible from, from those guys who've been here a lot. Okay, we've got a call on mic too. You said in terms of asking questions, things you might, you might be worried about. Is there anything you, you arrive worrying about? I wouldn't say probably worried, but more about um, making sure that we all part of the team and we all interacting with each other. We all making that team room the best possible place to go, and um, everyone is is very good at it and. You're always like a little worried or scared a little bit getting into a team room where you've never been before, and you're getting into a team room with your idols, the guys you've been look, looking up to your whole life, and, and suddenly you're here, so sometimes you have to pinch yourself a little bit, but it's reality now, and now it's about going preparing with those guys and, and, and um, get ready for, for Friday. What's the, the best thing you've experienced or the, the thing that's, that's pleased you most since you arrived here? It doesn't have to be golf-related. It could be, it could be anything in terms of you know, what give you a little boost. I think being in that team room uh, yesterday, Seve's uh, shirt in the middle, and we all talked about all the guys and heroes before us and keeping that legacy going um, and the DNA of the European team. Um, you, you hear about it, when once you're in that team room, 
you, you, you get goosebumps just talking about it and, and, and what it means to, to Europe and European golf. And um, that's been obviously the, the biggest or the coolest experience. Do you feel confident to express your thoughts in, in that environment then? I do, yeah. I, I feel like we've got a very good environment in that room. Um, you can say whatever you want, and, and um, we all have the same, same team. We all focused and determined on the job ahead, and, and that's why I've, I think it's, it's such a cool place to go. It's, 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 where, you, it's where you go when you, when you come for a little bit. It's in that team room, and um, everyone is, is, uh, is a big part of it. Here we cross to the left. Hi, Nikolai. Nice to meet you. Who is the best player between you and Ludwig Aberg right now? Thanks. That's a good question. Um, we're on the same team, so I would like to say we're both uh, pretty good. Um, he's in great form. He's been playing well. Uh, I know him pretty well, and we played together a few times. So uh, um, I'm happy that he's in. He's on my team. Okay, we'll go John down the front. Uh, your pronunciation and enunciation is very similar to Thomas's. Um, have you? Uh, do you take the Mickey out? Of Have you ever been asked to do an imitation of Thomas? Um, no, I haven't, but uh, well, there's, there's some good fun going on. And uh, <laughs> um, yeah, he's a great guy and a huge part of all this, and, and especially for me. So um, it's a cool experience to, to share this together, but also that, that, that we're both very focused on the job ahead, but we, we, can, still, we can still make a little bit of fun, yeah. Give us an example. Sorry? Give us an example. <laughs> yeah, but it, I know that's a tough one. It, it just happens naturally, you know. It's, just, it's, not, it's, not, it's not something you just write down and then it's like a script. It just happens in the right moments. And, and that's part of, you know, being from the same country, speaking the same language. You know, it's, it's just a different, it's a different vibe or a different, um, you know, you can always go in and say a little bit things. And, and when you're close as well, you know where to, to, um, to, 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 say the right things at the right times and stuff so it just happens naturally um but yeah it's, it's good fun okay. next question in the green on the left hello nico uh, you are 22 years old you are the youngest player in this year yeah, Ryder cup tell us how you feel as the so young prodigy playing in the Ryder cup yeah, uh, I don't think about it that much, actually. Um, there's a lot of young players in, in both teams, and um, it's not really something I think about, but um, in the end of the day, it's a cool achievement, being the youngest, I think, uh, on both teams, but I don't feel like I'm walking out there and playing uh, like the youngest player on the teams. Um, it's not something that's very important to me or, or anyone. It's just about 12 guys, getting the best out of each other and perform on the golf course. And if that means you're 20 or 22 or 40 something, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's just a cool thing uh, to say that, that you're playing your Ryder Cup when you're 22, but it's not really that important. It's just, uh, it's more of a cool thing to say, I'd, I'd probably say. Okay, we've got a question in the back with John, please. Woodbeck, if you can tell us some of the things specifically that Luke Donald has done for you. Um, when I started playing a little bit in America this year, uh, he was very good to me. We were out for dinners and lunch and always um, interacted uh, during the weeks. And, and that's probably where I, uh, I learned Luke. Um, and yeah, he's been a, he's been a He's been a very important part of all this process, of course, uh, but also to me, uh, learning Luke and, and learning the environment a little bit. And then, um, uh, yeah, I'd say that, that thing in America, when you get over there, you feel that probably a little bit alone uh, in some way because you're in a different environment you're not normally used to. And, and, and yeah, I spent a little bit of time with him in the States, and that's, that's why I think he was really, really good to me. And, and now being on his team is, is very special. And, and also, identify a point where you thought I might be able to make this Ryder Cup team? Was, was there a point where you thought you, you would be a part of it? When I started the season, 
I wasn't really thinking about it <laughs> too much, but uh, we, we put a plan in place at the start of the year where this was one of the, one of the goals, and there was two goals in that list, and um, we tried to focus on how would we build our game to get in the Ryder Cup, and um, I could see slowly when the season went on that there were some good things in, in place and happening, and then when we got to Prague and Switzerland, I played some good golf, where I needed to, and I feel like I've been doing that for a long time. Probably really haven't had like the really top results, but it's been on the right track for a long time. And then uh, a couple of good finishes there probably put me in a position where I thought, yeah, I've done probably done my part, and, and hopefully that'll be enough. Um, but I've always had in mind that I think I could be on the team and, and get on the team um, golf-wise. And um, yeah, sitting here now is is pretty special. Okay, any more questions? Are we all done? Okay, Nikolai, thanks for joining us. We wish you well this week. Thank you. Okay, thanks everyone. I'm joined by Robert McIntyre from Team Europe. Bob, I know how much uh, team sport has been a part of your life with Shinty, um, but golf is obviously an intrinsically individual sport, so how much are you enjoying being in the team environment this week? No, it's been good. Um, there's been a lot a lot going on, obviously, um, but no, it feels, it feels very much like home. Um, all the guys behind each other, for one goal, and it's it's part of. It's why the same in Shinty. It's it's one goal. It's to win the match, and it's one goal this week is to win win the trophy back. Thanks, Bob. Well, if not, Martin on the left. Bob, having won here, you know this place really well. Can you just talk a little bit about how different it's set up this this week, maybe to the, the Italian Open? Yeah, there's a couple of obviously drivable holes, um, more so than than what it was before, but still very similar. Um, you got hit it in the short stuff. The rough's brutal, but it's no different. Good golf scores will, will win matches, and um, if you keep it keep it reasonably straight off the tee, then you've got a great chance. When you played in the Hero Cup earlier in the year, there was a really good team room set up there. It's been taken up a notch here. Can <laughs> you just talk a little bit about what's in that room and the serry touches, etc.? Yeah, it's been brilliant. There's a bit of a kind of football changing room feel feel to it. Um, You've obviously got the lockers on one side and then you go through to another room that's... I mean, it gives you goosebumps when you walk into that room when you see... Or they've got a shirt of Seve. It's just... It's special, but, I mean, you're in a special week. You're, you're in a golf tournament that means the world to, to the best players on the planet. And um, it's, I'm sure once I kind of get more into it, it'll, it'll be the same for me. Last one's going to be even for a young guy like you, Seve is this huge inspiration for European golfers. Yeah, he is. I mean, he turned it round, didn't he? He turned the turned the tide. Um, obviously, Americans were dominating, but then kind of Seve took it upon himself to to change that, to rectify it. And I think ever since then, I mean, I'm sure John said it. I mean, he, that's the reason he plays golf. I mean, Seve's done so much for the game of golf and. Um, for me, it's obviously I didn't really get I didn't get to watch him, I didn't get to meet him. But I mean, I've watched so many clips of of him. But there's so many others. I mean, last night I spoke to Monty, and I mean, for a Scotsman, Monty was was everything. Again, just a little bit before my time. But I mean, I've heard all about him. I've watched so much, so many clips about him, and yeah, there's just so many there's so many idols that have done so well in this this tournament. Could a question on the back there, please? Bob, what um what experiences in terms of team events will you draw back on uh, for this week, you know, just in your amateur career? Yeah, I mean I've played 
everything we done with, with Scottish golf was was an amateur stuff. Was obviously team, um, was team stuff. European teams, Nations Cup. I went to college for a year and a half. It was a team. You travelled as a team. Um, my whole life's a team. I mean, I don't do anything without without a team behind me. I'm, I'm from a small community back home. A lot of family in one area. Everything's it's like a family. That's the way I try and treat a team. Is is literally try and try and treat it like a family. And this week's been the same. And at the end of the day, anyone will do anything for for each other to to try and get better, to make something. And this week's trying to win the Ryder Cup. And for me, the experiences that you would draw. I mean, I've not really got any that kind of stand out. But I mean, I've played so many team team events, team sports that. It just feels like a, a kind of normal for me. Not to bring up a, a bad memory, but 2017 LACC Walker Cup. Um, <laughs> anything that, that, that you still look back on that week, or was that a week that you kind of want to want to put out of your mind? No, no, I, I absolutely loved that week. I mean, if you look at that team, I think when you, in 10 years from now, I think you're going to look back at that team and go, that was one of the strongest American teams ever assembled. Um, I mean, a couple of them are here this week. A couple of them should have been on that team that week. Um, what a team they had. We had a strong, strong team, but the style of golf course didn't suit us. Um, this week, it should suit us. Um, so, no, I just, I loved every minute of that week, and it didn't go our way, but, I mean, it's difficult to beat the Americans in America on a golf course like that. Also, this side on mic too. Yeah. Hi, Bob. When you spoke last year about the excitement you felt arriving at St Andrews ahead of playing an Open there, I'm yep. wondering how does the feeling arriving here compare this week? Slightly different. Um, a bit more excitement within it. There's more. There's more buzz around it. There's more people around it. There's just. When I arrived at St Andrews, it was on me. Um, I was the only one that could control what what was going to happen. This week, there is so much more to it than than just me. I mean, it's I've obviously playing team sports. It's been brilliant, but there's nothing that's kind of felt the way I felt this week when I when I first arrived. Everyone, everyone's been so good from Luke to the vice captains to the players, the experienced players. They've kind of taken taken the rookies under their wing and and looked after us. Yeah, we're just going to go to this side, Bob and Brian. Well, you, you mentioned Monty. What specifically piece of advice did, did he give you about, you know, from his experiences that he says would, would help you this week? And secondly, um, I remember when you arrived at Augusta first time, you had some music <laughs> to drive here. Um, what Scottish music is on the playlist in the team room this week? I've not had the chance to, I don't think they'll let me put, put my phone to the speaker. Um, I'll probably drive them all out the team room, but no, Monty's been Monty's done everything in the game of golf. Um, he's been as a European golfer, he's been an inspiration for for many. Um, but again, every, he just everything reverts back to is just be yourself. Um, you can try and change so much stuff. You can try and be something else, but the best version of of you is is yourself, and um, that's pretty much what what he said last night. And I think that's kind of what the majority of of the kind of experienced guys have said. Just just be yourself. Across to two and Andy. Hi, hi Robert. Uh, my question kind of follows on from that a little bit. Um, but firstly, would I be right in assuming that maybe for the rookies, this is possibly the hardest part of the week, the build up, because it's all so brand new and, and waiting for it to actually start. And once you actually hit a ball, it might ease a bit. And and in respect to that. Is there anything you're doing in your downtime? I know you're not allowed to put your music on publicly, <laughs> but is there, is there any particular music you're listening to? Are you reading anything? Are you watching anything that's helping you kill those hours when your mind could wander? To be honest, there's not much time to yourself. Um, I don't know when you're sleeping, but it's been... To be honest with you, I'm, I'm very relaxed just now. I've not... The buzz, the proper buzz hasn't hit me yet. Um, I think Friday it'll or Thursday night it'll start to hit me but just now I mean I'm as chilled out as I've, I ever have been and 
just I think it's my personality, but um, no, the, on the music side of it, I mean, I don't think they'll let me let me control the music. I like my my Kaylee music, my my kind of Chukter music, but. Um, I'm an Englishman. You're going to have to explain <laughs> that in great detail to me. I'm afraid. <laughs> it's just the the Scottish Scottish Highland music, Scottish Kaylee stuff. Um, sometimes not the best singers, but a, a good party. So if you pipes and stuff like that coming out from you. <laughs> um, no, I mean I try and I try not make it too loud. But when I'm in the shower, I get the old old tunes on and, and sing away. It's like anyone. It's a fascinating image, that. Cross <laughs> <laughs> over to Mike 3 and Neil. <laughs> yeah, Bob, just how much detail has Luke and the advice captain given to you about what, what they're expecting? Do you know, like, when you're playing, who you're playing with? and how, if that, Does that help you in your preparation to know what your role's going to be? Yeah, I've got kind of a hint on, on who I'm going to be playing with, what I'm going to be playing in. Um, Again, nothing's going to prepare me for that first tee shot. It's just plain and simple. It's, it's something bigger than I've ever ever been involved in, ever experienced. So, um, no, they just they try and keep it as light as they can, um, so that I can play golf the way I know I can play golf, and the main parts just enjoy it. To follow up on that, all the, the, you talked about talking to seeing the Seve and talking to Monty and all the, the emotional messages you had the other night. How are you going to do it going forward? To do you need to actually calm down by the time you get to the first tee off, or do you need that nervous energy to keep going? For me, just now, as I said, like I'm, I'm as calm as ever just now. Um, I actually said to my family um, at the start of the week, do you know, I've not, I've not got the nerves yet. Um, I'm very chilled. I think it's because of the team environment I'm in. It's very much what I'm comfortable in. Um, but I think Friday or Thursday night, when it's when I know it's coming. Um, I think the excitement will pick up and the nerves will start start to hit. But it's part of it. It's part of the journey, and I just got to I got to enjoy it. It's there. It's not going to go away. Um, and just accept it's there and, and go and do your best. Okay, we've got time for two more with John and then Carl. Uh, Bob, you've talked very well about team sports and so on, and how many you've played in and all the rest of it. But this is not quite the same. This is a team event in an individual sport. Yep. So tell us about the differences between playing for a team in an individual sport and playing in a team in a team sport. Yeah, well, so the sport I play, shinty, I mean, it's 12 a side, but it's man on man. It's not like football where it's, you've got the team will attack you and it's, they've got a formation they're going to attack you with. In shinty, it's man v man, the formation set up and you, you mark a man and obviously you can cover, but we always say, I mean, my dad's a coach, but he always says, look, if you do your job right, then it'll look after the guy there. If you do your job right, then it takes care of it. And it's the same in the team aspect for golf. It's, I get it's, it's a team, but it's an individual. Again, if, if I do my job, it helps the rest of the guys. So I'm trying to take that into it. And um, yeah, I, I find it very similar to, to the sports I, I enjoy. And the main thing is just do your job well and it will help the, the main goal. You've worked out the team mentality in an individual sport. Yeah, so it's in Shinty because it's such a it's such a man-on-man -man sport that obviously if it's if there's a breakaway you've got to cover in but the majority of the time it's 1v1, you stop your man and it helps the team. Okay, we'll take the final question from Carl just behind, thanks. Hi Bob, I'm just wondering what everyone's thinking about conditions this week, not in terms of the course setup, but just in terms of the course and its undulations and, and the, the weather and stuff. How, how's everyone feeling about that? Yeah, it's good. I mean, the majority of guys have, have been here and played it from kind of 2021. Um, there was a few guys that came. Um, but no, the, the course is a course. It's, it is hilly. It's, it's hot. Um, but no, I mean, we've got, we've got all the best stuff. We've got the best guys for the job, um, from hydration, nutrition, everything. Um, and yeah, just, just as well we're athletes. <laughs> not, not to play a bit of natural stereotype, but how is the, as a Scotsman, how are you dealing with the, the sun? Yeah, it's all right. Um, factor 50 on and just 
get out there and, and enjoy yourself. Okay, Bob, thanks for joining us. We wish you well this week. Thank you. Okay, welcome back everyone. I'm pleased to be joined by Justin Rose of Team Europe. Justin, a couple of weeks ago you spoke about how much you were looking forward to being back in the Ryder Cup team environment. How's it been so far this week? Yeah, it's been an incredible, you know, amazing. I think it started for us. I feel like the Ryder Cup as a team started a couple of weeks ago. We did come over here for a practice trip the Monday of Wentworth and I think that that was a really fruitful and worthwhile experience from, from a yeah, team bonding point of view, and I think that made the whole week at Wentworth feel like a little bit of a, a soft continuation of that team spirit and team bonding. So I feel like coming into the early parts of this week, there's been no heavy lifting around that side of things. This feels quite natural, and um, yeah, the team's coming together nicely. Thanks, 
Justin, we'll open up for some questions. Would you like to raise your hand? Start on the right-hand side, on mic two, please. Uh, Justin, there's been a bit of a generational shift, I suppose, in the, in the European team the last couple of years. Uh, how do you like being one of the old men of the team and that kind of thing? Is that, is that something you're, you're, you're happy with? And do, you, do you do a lot of passing on your experience, or do you still just feel like one of, one of the boys, really? Yeah, I mean, uh, listen, um, it is what it is. I uh, wish I was 10 years younger, as we all do. But uh, no, I mean, I think the fact of being back here and playing is something that was a, you know, a career goal for me, and it was a push. And um, not making the last one is always that, you know, kick out the backside that you need and, you know, lights a fire. Um, I think in terms of age, I mean, I, I don't feel necessarily that that's my age or that's a number. I still feel like one of the boys and one of the team members. And... Um, you know, from the experience point of view, you know, yeah, the youngsters do seem very self-assured, and um, that's part of what they what they bring to the team. And you don't want to kind of talk them out of that. You know, the the, the sort of um, you know they're experiencing everything for the first time, which I think is wonderful. They don't they haven't labelled anything yet, so you don't want to kind of get in there and impose your your thoughts too much. I think my job is a one of the experienced players on the team is to kind of have an open door policy. Like if they, you know, just make them feel comfortable enough that if they want to ask a question, yeah, let's, let's hear it, you know, and uh, then I'll do my best to give some type of, you know, perspective. But I think until that point, just let them roll, you know, um, and I think that that is, uh, that's what they bring to the team and that's why they're a very important aspect to the team. And I think this team has a beautiful blend to it because of that. Go to Anne on this side, please. Hi, Justin. What is the best uh, advice you've ever gotten throughout your Ryder Cup career, and who did you get it from? Oh, yeah, God. Um, I'm not sure if I can single out like an exact person stroke quote. Um, there's been so many influential people in the Europe. You know, it, it might be reading a quote on a wall that just resonates with you that particular week. I think it's you know, there's not necessarily one piece of advice. You know, each Ryder Cup feels so different. Whether you play at home, whether you play away, whether you win, whether you lose, they are polar opposites in terms of how they feel. So I almost feel like one piece of advice, there's not a blanket piece of advice that really carries through. Um, it all starts in the team room. I think just sort of being open enough and vulnerable enough with your team just to sort of connect and bond is the beginnings of every great week. And I think that that's sort of the common thread um, that, I, that I sort of have tried to experience in all of my Ryder Cups. But um, <clears throat> just thinking off the top of my head, it's just really trying to sort of shed light on, you know, people that can kind of tell you how it's going to feel the next day, what to look out for possibly, like in the moment. You know, in terms of, you know, you play team golf for two, two days, four sessions, and then suddenly Sunday feels a million miles different. It just sometimes knowing what to expect and, 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 and listening to a, a voice of reason and, and hearing some wisdom at the right time. So what I was saying earlier is you don't want to kind of preempt too much, but when the time comes, it's nice to hear something from someone that's been there. You know, and that for me, like, the, the, the shift into Sunday was something that was very helpful for me. And I did, I had a lot of success um, in my first couple singles matches due to kind of somewhat knowing what to expect. Stay on that mic with Luke. Hi, Justin. Um, during these like intense moments of Ryder Cup pressure and nerves, is there anything you go to, like a, a mantra or thought, something that you tell yourself just to help you kind of reset and refocus? I think just, yeah, slowing things down generally. Um, you know, lights and music is sort of an analogy that I've always had, is that, you know, when the lights are bright and the music's loud, you tend to just to subconsciously do things faster. Just being aware of that, you know, psychological, natural, um, you know, uh, reaction and just sort of suck in some air, walk a little slower, just try to bring your pace down and, uh, yeah, just the basics, unfortunately. There's no, there's no easy way to get through it. It's just trust your training, do the basics well, um, and then, yeah, I, I think that's the, the beauty of a home crowd is that they keep you on the front foot, they keep your head up, they keep you moving forward. And I think that those are, the, those are the, the advantages of playing at home. I think that they do a lot of the mental heavy lifting for you from that point of view. Across to the far right, and Doug at the back. Justin, we've known for Mecca, sorry, way back. Um, sorry, hey, sorry. should have looked for the shirt. <laughs> um, we've known for some time who was, who was not going to be here based on, on the boys that went to, to live on both sides. Um, but, but it seems like what, what Europe loses is a lot of winning culture in the, in the back room from, 
from GMAC, from Pulse, from Lee, and what have you. Do you think it's important going forward for them to find a way, however this thing's gonna work out, to find a way back uh, in, into the Ryder Cup in whatever capacity, or does Europe pretty much need to go forward with what they've got? Yeah, great question. I mean, um, yeah, there's a lot of winning culture still in the team, I think, in, with the people in and around the team. I think the captains in and around the team, the vice captains, Thomas, Luke, they've all been, you know, incredible. Luke's got an incredible Ryder Cup record. He's, you know, the most winning thing from a percentage point of view. So the winning culture in our team is as strong as ever. Um, I think that when you look at, you know, like in our team room, McGinley, um, you know, Thomas Bjorn, like I was saying, Jose Maria, we had Monty in there from, uh, you know, just people that are still connected to the European team. And I would say invested in the European team. There's still a lot of winning culture around what we do. Um, so... Obviously, in, in life and in business and in everything, there's obviously transition phases where you, you need to look to new leaders. And what would be great is if you can kind of slip through that period of, of transition unaffected and, uh, you know, you start to look to the next generation, obviously, to, to come through and to start to kind of have that winning culture. And, and that, that could happen as early as this year. You know, you start to get the rookies off to a good start this year at home and you know, suddenly you, you're starting to blood some, some of the future with positive experiences, and yeah, the transition starts. And maybe the transition was, has started, you know, last time round at, at Whistling Straits, and now we're coming through that already. But yeah, there, there is a different, obviously Westy Poults, I know exactly the guys you're talking about, and obviously as captains or vice captains or however they may or may not be involved in the future, they do have a lot to offer, of course, from, from experiences and that point of view. But um, the more we can kind of blood the younger generation coming through, the quicker you're going to kind of, you know, skip through that transition phase. Okay, we're going to cross the far left on mic three, please. Yep. Justin, you, you touched on this, but when you have a, an event where there's so much fan engagement, um, can it be as motivating if you're the home team or the away team? And, and some would say it's even maybe more male motivating if they're against you. How do you find it both ways? And do you find one more motivating than the other? Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I would say if you do get on the front foot as an away team, it's very satisfying to, to sort of be able to silence the crowd, but I think it's harder to do. Um, I'm sure, you know, it's rewarding, but it's harder. So I think that this, the record in the Ryder Cup suggests that. Um, and it's obviously not... It's, it, Medina is the one skewing, you know, that's the one Ryder Cup that has kind of gone against the home course for a while, and I think that that was an incredibly satisfying feeling for Europe that day, to sort of, the silence was golden, you know, that's a good old saying, and you know, no doubt, that, that's the job of this side of the room, and um, you know, the job on this side of the room is to, to sort of stay on the front foot and keep it noisy and make the putts and make the birdies, and the golf will kind of dictate the crowd, you know, and I think that that's, you can't hide from that either, do you know what I mean? You've got to go out, you've got to play good golf, the clubs do do the talking at the end of the day, so uh, I think um, you know, each team's going to be ready for that challenge. Question down the front here. Were you able to catch much of the Solheim Cup? <laughs> yeah, a little bit, actually. I did, did sort of, I was packing on Sunday and packing with the TV on and, um, yeah, sort of strung out the packing because the golf got exciting and, uh, yeah, it was awesome, awesome to watch. Um, couple big turnaround matches at the end. I think um, Europe looked really good with about two hours to go. Uh, Team USA looked odds on. <laughs> with about 45 minutes to go, and then obviously it ended up in a tie, which felt like a win, you know, and obviously it was portrayed very much as a win, which is obviously an interesting aspect with the retaining the cup versus actually winning it, and I think that that's kind of an interesting debate in, a, in and of itself. Um, and I think obviously a couple of really clutch performances from Caroline Headwall and obviously Saganda being the hometown hero, uh, it was kind of like written in the stars that it would finish that way. That was, I guess, my second question is, if you guys get 14 points this week, you don't get the cup. So what side of that debate do you sit on? Would you rather see it end up in a playoff, or do you enjoy the system as it is? I mean, history is history. History is so important, I think. Um, it's quite nice to have to wrestle it back fair and square. You know, you've got to win, you've got to win it to get the cup back. Um, and I think, you know, the Ashes in cricket, which is, you know, retaining the Ashes is a big thing. Obviously, in cricket, you can have rain that can really, you know, interrupt and, and cause draws and things like that. But, yeah, you know, retaining that, i.e. not letting the other team have the trophy, I think, can be a win. So, that I, therefore, sometimes the tie is still relevant in my mind. 
but I do know what you mean. It's like, it's like, ah, oh, I was so close to a, to a, to a, uh, an epic result one way or another. Sticking that back with Dylan. So I don't know. I mean, it's history. I guess I'm basically I'm saying we we'll just keep uh, loyal to the history of it. Justin, what are the specific emotions that come with uh, missing a team, and then mm-hmm. what are the specific emotions that come with then being back on the team? Is there a different appreciation that comes with with being here this week? Yeah, I mean, I think the emotions are when you do miss a team, it's a it's an opportunity to look inward and go, okay, well, clearly. I wasn't valued enough or I wasn't playing well enough and um, I don't like that feeling, so I, I need to do something about that. You know, not looking at, like, I should have been picked or they did me wrong. It's like, okay, well, you've got to start right here. Do you know what I mean? Take things into my own hands. And um, that was very much my, my mindset coming into this one. Obviously, I was picked in the end, first time I've actually been picked, but I feel like six and six is a, it's like a half the team's been picked so it's like not really being picked anymore I don't feel like you know it used to be 10 guys qualified two guys got picked and the picks very much felt like they, they were wild card picks whereas I feel like there's no element of that in the team now at all which I actually think is, a, is kind of a nice change in my mind that it doesn't sort of fragment the team in any way shape or form um, Hard team to make, obviously, when there's only six guys playing, but that was still very much the goal of mine, to, to make this team. And, uh, yeah, and then slightly from a 30,000-foot view, yeah, a little bit more gratitude to the fact of being back and, and a nod to the hard work that's been done. But the job starts Friday. It's not, you know, the job's not done by making the team. Let's go across the John and Mike, too. Justin, <coughs> Bob was in here just before you and talking about... Uh, the advantage that he thinks he has in that he plays in a team sport and shouldn't be. Would you address uh, him and whether you see anything in him because of that background about him that makes him slightly more perhaps mature, if that's not the right word? And secondly, would you address the issue of the difficulty, if indeed it is a difficulty, of playing a team sport in an individual, in a sport where for almost all the rest of the time you're playing individually? Um, yeah, so still not entirely sure what Shinty is and what goes into it, but you know, Bob, I can imagine what it is by looking at Bob as a golfer and like he is determined, he's dogged, he's got a great short game, he gets himself out of tight situations regularly. Um, you know, he's hit some unbelievable golf shots. He plays creatively. Um, he's got actually, a, I think, a really nice style for match play, and um, obviously any type of team sport or physical sport you've got to be tough as well there's, there's that sort of toughness to it as well so hopefully you know he'll bring bring that from shinty whatever shinty is <laughs> exactly <laughs> um and i think the challenge for individual players playing team sports is just clicking into it quick enough i think that it's a you know it's an amazing feeling but 18 whole matches are sprints in a sense and just you know making sure that that team dynamic is is there from, from the word go. And um, I'm not sure there's a, a magic button that you can push to, to kind of create that. And I think maybe by trying too hard to create it, you don't find it. So it's a really hard question to answer. And it's probably the ones that the captains and the vice captains are really trying to figure out, you know, subconsciously for us all the time. But at the end of the day, even four ball and foursomes comes down to hitting good golf shots and only one person can hit a golf shot uh, a good golf shot at one time so if you just boil it down to to the 30 seconds that you can control it can still come down to an individual mindset if if you feel more comfortable with that okay we're going to take the final question on microphone three at the back uh yeah justin from your perspective how has the way rory's treated this week evolved you know from this first to now yeah, I think obviously it means a lot to him for sure. And I think, um, you know, he's, as he's evolved, he's become obviously, a, you know, a, you know a, a leader of the team. For, you know, obviously from experience, he's played the most in our team. I think this is his seventh Ryder Cup. Um, he's also experienced obviously some lows, but a lot of highs as well in, in the Ryder Cup. And, he's, you know, he's been one of those players that's kept the moment, momentum going that was started a generation or two before us and before him. And um, I think he has a really good appreciation of history and the history of the game of golf. 
and you know the, the guys that have come before him. And obviously, he does see himself very much as well. He is a legend of the game, and will continue to be a legend of the game. And uh, you know, it's hard to see yourself that way when you're playing. But I think that's his trajectory, and I think that he will have a huge role in this team for the next decade plus. Justin, thanks for joining us. Enjoy the week. Thank you. Low, isn't it? Okay, welcome back everyone. I'm joined by Rory McElroy from Team Europe. Rory, remarkably your seventh Ryder Cup. Um, Thanks, Steve. <laughs> it's all right. A lot of team rooms you've been in there. We saw a video last night from, um, from Luke talking through the team uh, environment. How's it been being in that environment this week? Yeah, it's, um, it's been fantastic. I think, um, you know, everyone knows this is a bit of a um, transitional period for, for the European team. And, um, you know, there's people that have been a part of the European team for a long time that aren't, that aren't here this week. But um, I think the guys that we've brought in are going uh, to be awesome. Um, Nikolai, Ludwig, Bob... Uh, you know that's that's the future of our team and the future of the Ryder Cup. And you know I think you know we came here to to Rome a couple of weeks ago for a, a practice trip, and I thought that was incredibly important. And, and honestly, I couldn't believe that we'd never done it before. Uh, it was you know we played a practice round, and you know we got familiar with the golf course, but then the sort of time that we spent off the course I thought was was great, and um, just sort of sharing stories around the fire pit and, and sort of describing our journeys in golf and what the Ryder Cup means to us and um, sort of just getting to know one another a little better, even people that I thought that I knew for a long time, um, you know, sort of getting to know them a little better too was, was wonderful. So I think, um, you know, Luke and his vice captains have really, um, you know, sort of tapped into this, uh, you know, emotional connection um, around Team Europe in this week and we've all bought into it and, um, you know, it's, it's been an ama amazing experience so far and, you know, it's only Wednesday, you know, there's, there's a lot of great things to come, but, uh, you know, couldn't be more excited to be a part of the team and, um, to have those other 11 guys be my, my teammates. Thanks, Rory. We'll open up with Dylan on this mic. Yeah, Rory, you talk about how different it is just being able to spend this quality time this week. How much quality time do you get to spend with the guys on your team just week in, week out on uh, PGA Tour or DP Tour? Like, do you... Do you go for dinner? Do you get to have long, extended, you know, quality time with these guys or not really? With some of them. Um, with some of them I do, and then some live in different places, and it's, it's hard, and then the weeks of tournaments are always so busy, and we're always doing our own things and have our own little teams around us that it's, that it's hard to carve out that time. Um, I feel like leading up to Ryder Cups, it's always a bit easier, so... Um, you know, Irish Open and Wentworth the last couple of weeks, you know, spending more time with guys and, um, you know, making that a priority, um, you know, has, has been there. But, yeah, I mean, I, you know, you know, during the course of the year, I'm probably just as, as close with a lot of the American guys than I am with the Europeans just because of the places that I play and, the, uh, and, and where I live and, and sort of who I practice with and who I play with at home. So, um, you know, but these, these last few weeks have been really nice to... To sort of reconnect with some some of those guys. Okay, 
bit of Rory behind to Rick. Hey, Rory. Um, just, just one on fans. Uh, the atmosphere obviously makes the Ryder Cup as part of it. You, you experienced the odd rogue fan at the Ryder Cup. I'm thinking of Brian Harmon getting heckled at the Open. Do you just fear that sometimes the tribalism might go too far here? No, because I think that all that's part of the Ryder Cup. You know, that's there's not uh, there's not a lot of other instances in the game of golf where that happens. Um, but there's there's certainly a line, um, and I think most most fans that come out to watch golf are very respectful and they know what that line is. Uh, so, no, I have I have I have no issues about that. And it you know, yeah, we've all had our fair share of heckles over the years and whatever and that's you know that's that's a part of it you know if you you know someone said to me once if you want to be part of the circus you have to put up with the clowns so okay across to this side i think bob first and then kevin that maybe that was off? Was it right away in 2010 or did it take till Medina where you found, yeah, you know, maybe I, I, I misread this? Or, or no, it was definitely that first Ryder Cup. It was probably very early in the week at Celtic Manor. Um, you know, I, I you know, I, I took a, you know, I took a bit of grief for those comments and rightfully so. Um, but I remember in 2010 in one of the practice rounds, I still had the sort of long curly hair at that point and a few of the guys on the team came down to the first tee with wigs on and like sort of made a joke of it and um, and yeah that that meant a lot to me and I think just early in that week and and it's not look I said it in in that little you know video piece I did earlier in the week I it's not as if I didn't play team golf before or knew what it was about but um, I think that you know in 2009 I was just so focused on myself and trying to get my career off the ground that you know you know, I, I felt like I had sort of bigger and better things to achieve for, you know, my individual goals and stuff like that, that I just didn't, you know, put any emphasis on making a Ryder Cup team until, until you make one and then you never want to be off one again. You know, I think that's the, you know, that's sort of the crux of it. So, uh, I love being a part of this team. Uh, my most enjoyable moments in my career have been being a part of European Ryder Cup teams. I'm still very, very proud and probably proudest of the things I've done as an individual, but um, nothing, nothing beats this week. It's just, it's an amazing experience and uh, I want to be a part of it as, for as long as I can. Okay, go two rows back to Mike Four. Uh, Rory, a lot of water's been under the bridge in the last couple of years, but in this week of all weeks, do you, do you actually miss guys like Sergio, Porter, Westwood? Uh, yeah, I mean, I... It's certainly a little strange not having them around, um, but I think this week of all weeks, it's going to hit home with them that, you know, they're not here, and you know, I think they're going to they're going to miss being here more than than we're missing them. So, and that's I'm not saying that that's like, like it's a, it's just more. I think this week is a realization that you know the decision that they made has led to not being a part of this week, and that's. You know that's that's tough, and you know the the landscape in golf is ever changing and more dynamic, and you know we'll see what happens and whether there'll be a part of it in the future. But um, you know, I always thought leading up to this week, it's when it's going to hit home that you know that the, that they're not going to be here. Cross over to the left on Mike Three, Neil. Yeah, hi, Roy. Just um, a couple of things. How, how much did being in Greece this last week climatize you for the heat here? And just personally, I live in Florida, so I'm all right with the heat. <laughs> And first, your own game. How much better do you feel about where you are with your game than when you were coming in two years ago? And how much you feel more able to contribute? Yeah. Um, so no, I Greece wasn't actually that warm. It was it was quite windy though. Um, but I, yeah. So when I coming into twenty one, um, I felt like I was searching a little bit. You know, I, I didn't feel in in full control of my game. Um, and if you if you trace everything back, if you you know I, I I got a lot of confidence and belief in myself um, that Sunday singles at Whistling Straits because I certainly wasn't believing in myself at that time, but the rest of my team did believe in me. 
you know, sent me out number one to go get a blue point on the board and I was able to do that. And I think that just gave me so much confidence going forward that, you know, and I said this, my first start after Whistling Straits was in Vegas and I won the CJ Cup. And I, I said in my interview afterwards, I, I realized that just being myself is enough. I'm not trying to be something that I'm not. Um, and I think for, you know, a good part of 2021, I was trying to be something that, I maybe that maybe wasn't natural to me and um, I just went back to really trying to be myself and trying to express myself the best way that I can on the golf course and um, I think the last two years have, have sort of proved that um, that's the that's the way that I'm going to play my best golf so uh, I certainly feel a lot better about things coming into this Ryder Cup and feel like I'm um, more than capable of uh, you know contributing more than one point this time around. Stick on that mic with Jamie please. Rory, coming into every Ryder Cup, it seems there's a lot of debate about captains setting up the course to suit their team. And obviously the last few Ryder Cups have been blowouts for the home team. But are we at the stage now where there really isn't a fundamentally European style of playing and a fundamentally American style of play? I think so. I mean, it, I, the way the, the, the world of golf is going, we, you know, most of the Europeans are we're playing the majority of our golf in in the United States and we're playing all the same tournaments and the same course setup. So we maybe grew up a little differently. And I think, you know, with some of the things that maybe the Europeans, you know, try to do when, when we do have that home course advantage or, you know, the home course, I'm not going to call it home course advantage, but you can maybe tap into a little more of like how we grew up playing the game rather than how we play the game right now. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's hard. I mean, it's not, a, you, know, you know, whistling straights wasn't, you can't really set whistling straights up a certain way. It just is what it is. Yes, you can do stuff here and grow the rough up and, you know, try to pinch the fairways in at 320 so you're hitting more, you know, mid and long irons into greens and stuff like that. But, um, and that's all just looking at statistics and sort of seeing as a whole what, what the team does better than the other team. And, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, I think there's a reason that, you know, playing, whether it be in Europe for us or the U.S. for, for the American team, you know, there's, there has to be an advantage to that. And that's why I've said this for the last number of years. Winning an away Ryder Cup is probably one of the biggest achievements in golf right now. Okay, we'll go to Mike one in the back. Is there anything uh, anecdotal you could share and maybe what responsibilities you've acquired as you've played more of these Ryder Cups, maybe in terms of helping captains with team building or mentoring guys or anything like that? Yeah. Um, I get every captain has a, has a different um, leadership style. So they're, they're looking for different things from different people. Um, you know, Paul McGinley was, uh, was, was really the first captain that um, I felt utilized me in a certain way or wanted me to do certain things. Um, and then ever since then, um, you know, certain captains have asked certain things for me and, and I'm more than, but it's not, I mean, I'm, again, I'm not there giving rallying cries and team speeches or, you know, I, I, I said this, uh, I think, you know, when we came in the practice trip, I said to every guy, like, I don't want anyone, you know, I'm older than people and have more experience and, you know, some of these guys have watch me play on TV, but I don't want anyone looking up to me. I just want everyone looking, looking beside, you know, I, I, I want them to look over at me. I don't want them to look up to me in any way. I want them to see me like they're on, that I'm on their level and there's no hierarchy in our team. There's no, it's just, we're all one part of a 12 man team and we all go forward together. And I guess that's the one message that I've tried to relay to the, some of the younger guys on the team. Okay, we'll cross the John on mic too. Um, tied matches. Um, wh what do you feel about them as a competitor? Would you like to see them fought out to the end? Uh, and if so, would you like to do it? How would it, that be done? Like 14 all? Correct. Um, I love them whenever we won the last one. <laughs> so <you were> <laughs> I think it's part of history and tradition. Um, you know, I was watching the Solheim Cup last week and, and obviously there was huge celebrations when Europe got to 14 and, and, and retained the, the cup. Um, and I thought to myself, geez, they're celebrating a lot for a draw. And then I go back to Medina in 2012 and we went ballistic when we got to 14 as well. So, um, 
I think retaining it means something, and there's certainly a, a historical and traditional element to it. Um, I don't know. I'm, I, am, I, I do like the traditions of the game, and this, this competition's been around since 1927, and that's the way they've always done it. Does that mean that's the way they always have to do it? Um, probably not, but it's, it's nice to keep some of the, the, the tradition around the event. Go final question on mic three at the back there. Hi Rory, um, we obviously don't know the pairings yet, but assuming you might have to use a different golf ball, um, I'm just wondering if you can discuss the challenges that brings with it and how much time you would devote to maybe practicing with another ball in the lead up to that. Yeah, um, the, I guess the nice thing is um, you can do it in a way where I think all these golf balls react pretty similarly with a driver. Um, but it's more like iron shots and around the green. So, you know, if, if I'm playing with a guy that uses a different golf ball, I can just hit his golf ball off the tee. He's able to hit it into the green and we go from there. Um, vice versa, he can hit my golf ball off the tee and I can hit my ball into the green and, and do that. Um, yeah, it, it can get a little tricky when you're, you know, chipping and putting and, and different feels of, of balls, but, um, I think a couple of days, you know, hitting some, getting numbers with that golf ball, um, spin rates is a big thing, especially if the wind gets up and some of these elevations just, you know, if, if you're into the wind and say the other golf ball spins two or 300 more RPMs than, than your golf ball, that makes a huge difference into the wind. So just trying to, trying to get comfortable with that in some ways and, and trying to be mindful of it. But, um, I don't think it presents a huge challenge. I think guys are pretty much adaptable, and you know we've got 24 of the best players in the world here. If, if we can't adapt a little bit to a slight change in golf ball, um, you know the game's certainly not going in the right direction. So I think I think we're all okay. Okay, Rory, thanks for joining us. Enjoy Cheers. your week. Thank you.